response to questions someone asked when you speak the subject matter goes ever our heads in most of the cases can't you speak from a level that we can understand the question is quite relevant and this is the question that arises in most of the people whenever a master speaks he certainly has you in mind otherwise there is no sense in his speaking also if he speaks only that much that you can understand then too it will be useless certainly when he speaks he has you in mind that is why he is speaking of the beyond he is bringing the message from beyond whatever you have known if the master speaks it is irrelevant he must speak of something which you do not know if he speaks only of that which is known he will fail in his role and with the known there will be no transformation transformation is possible only if he speaks that is beyond your understanding the message from beyond transformation is possible only if he speaks that is beyond your understanding the message from beyond his work is transformation of human consciousness that is why he brings the beauty and the fragrance from beyond that you are unfamiliar with whatever master speaks you are unfamiliar with only if he talks of the beyond that you can look beyond to see what is being communed to you the sky the space beyond all belongs to you but you have your eyes fixed on the ground truly the earth too belongs to you and the sky ever is spread like a vast canopy too belongs to you never let your life come to an end looking only on the ground you have to learn to look beyond that is why the master speaks to you of the beyond so that you may be interested in the beyond that is unknown and unknowable certainly whenever he brings the unknown and unknowable to you it flies above your head you always want to listen that which is known to you what will you gain by listening that which is already known also if all that is spoken is understood that will be useless because that will not transform you master is not to entertain you instead he is here instead he is here for the transformation of human consciousness even if the master speaks and nothing is understood then to his rule is not fulfilled that is the reason the master speaks in such a way that a part is understood and the remainder goes above your head this creates interest in you to look beyond and try to decipher that the master is communing holding the known as the staff you may continue the journey towards the unknown and unknowable this is indeed the way of the master certainly you will want that master to speaks all that you can understand easily always then how your journey of transcendence will begin or continue the master teaches you to creep inch by inch that is why the master has to be careful that he may not continue at a speed that you are left far behind he is always concerned that you remain connected the master though he speaks to you however he brings the message of the beyond certainly you will feel uncomfortable 
He is not entertaining you through the talk. He is not playing music to entertain you either. If he says all that you already know, that will strengthen your ego. Through entertainment alone you have wasted lives after lives. Through entertainment alone you have been in the dreamland. Now he has to break your dreams. But he cannot do this abruptly that you turn into an enemy. Slowly and slowly he has to break all your dreams. He has to wake you from your deep slumber and dreams. He has to wake you in a different land. Whenever he speaks, partly he speaks that you can understand and partly that you cannot understand. However, this alters your state of consciousness and changes the level of understanding. Then slowly and slowly, one day, you will be able to understand all that he has spoken earlier. This process continues and when he finds the message is going far beyond your understanding, then suddenly he brings laughter through a joke or so. He may introduce Mullah Nasruddin to say all that was impossible to say otherwise. Or he may bring a Sufi parable or Zen cone or a story. You were suddenly going too much into the mind. Suddenly he changes the gear and brings something light so that you are brought outside the mind realm to the valley of consciousness. And then suddenly he takes you to the peak. You are caught outside the mind and in that gap he does the work. He knows all that is beneficial for you but not pleasing to you. You have developed the habit of poison and bad habits. Very meticulously he has to manage you so that you can be pushed towards the sky. He is not against earth. The earth or the lower is also part of the sky or the higher. Both lower and the higher are part of one harmony. Lower is the beginning of the higher and higher is the culmination of the lower. He does not want to uproot you from the ground. Instead he wants your roots to go deep within the earth that the tree of your consciousness may rise in the sky to converse with the stars. He wants your consciousness to connect both the earth and the sky. Be in the world but never let the world within you. Certainly I can understand your concern. Slowly and slowly you have to take interest and move towards this new horizon of the inner that he is pointing out. All that you find is going above your head or beyond your comprehension will certainly one day start flowing within you. A child goes to a school and enters a standard one. We do not talk to him of the university. We talk to him only that is relevant to his class. And as he is nearing the completion of the standard one and ready to enter the next standard, he is introduced to the next standard. This he may not understand. Very faintly he understands this, but it is necessary to talk to him of the upcoming standard. Otherwise he will have to return to standard one again. Those who start taking slight interest in the upcoming standard, they alone will enter in the next class. When something goes beyond your comprehension, what does this mean? Certainly it means that up to now you have never tried to raise your head 
to this level you have never tried to understand something which was incomprehensible now there are two options now there is two options either i bring down my level but that will not transform you you watch a movie or a play very attentively 3 hours after you forget everything now there are two options either i bring down my level so that everything is comprehensible to you or maintain the level that it may not even reach your head but in both cases that will not transform you you watch a movie or a play very attentively 3 hours after you forget everything you watch the films but none can lift your consciousness you want to see and hear all that echoes with you you do not want anything that may change your level of thinking look at the theme of all your movies they simply entertain you and ignite all that is within you i have heard once mulla nasruddin went to see a movie a scene comes when the lead heroine is standing near a pond ready to take a dive she begins to undress herself very eagerly mulla was watching as she is about to undress herself completely all the spectators sat with their spines straight and eyes focused unblinkingly like a yogi the entire movie hall looked like the yoga class the spectators sitting is still with backs straight holding breath same time a train passes whistling between the spectators and her the train blocked the vision tired and weary everyone including mulla relaxed in his seat but he remained sitting in his seat this show finished everyone had gone but mulla bought the ticket for the next show and fixed himself on the seat again the movie began the scene came mulla became even more attentive again as the heroine was about to undress the train passed and blocked the view the movie finished mulla bought the ticket for the next show When he was entering the theater this time the gatekeeper inquired from Mulla if he was coming to see the movie again very aptly Mulla replied yes indeed i am coming to see the movie again the gatekeeper again inquired but why Mulla replied very coolly indian trains do not run always in time i hope this time the train runs late i hope This time the train runs late. In the scene after the train passes, the heroine is already swimming in the pond, and only her head is visible. The movie, the scene, and the songs all vanish from your heart and memory. People read the scriptures, the Ramayana, the Mahabharat, the Holy Bible, etc. All these are like old movies. try to understand the mathematics of these movies and the so called scriptures just the old triangle one lover and two beloveds everywhere there is love triangle two lovers are fighting over one beloved just love triangle is the style and theme of all these scriptures For centuries people have been rejoicing the love triangles of Ram, Sita and Ravan as holy scripture. Every year for 10 days the same portrayal continues at different places. The Bhagavad Gita also interests people somewhat. There is fight, violence and sensation. The entire Mahabharat is sensational fratricidal war. based on jealousy hatred greed and finally war this is part of your life this interests you when the war breaks between two countries everywhere there is talk of the war 
where there is violence, war, conflict, desire and sex, you will find the crowd gathered there. Certainly this will not bring awakening. Your consciousness shall not rise. You will remain the insect crawling on the ground. Thus, I have one option. Either I bring my talk to the level where it may interest you, like your so-called movies and TV serials, then I have no interest. That is not my work. All this is the theme of your movies, TV shows and stage acts. The other option is I continue to explain all that your mind is not able to grasp now. Your head is not so low like the animals. Just stand straight and learn to look upwards. Stop looking downwards. There is no end to your height. You can reach to the heights of the stars. That is your destiny. If the seed could understand, it will not worry. The seed is not so tiny. One day, it will become a big tree. Birds will find shelter. Tired and weary travelers will rest and find solace under the tree shade. The seed shall find is unbelievable. So too, right now you are like the seed that is unaware of its potentiality. The entire effort of the master is to introduce you to the far away glimpses, make you acquainted with all that is known to you, so that a new aspiration becomes part of you. Those who aspire for the higher certainly attain to the higher one day. If you never aspire to reach the Mount Everest, you cannot reach. Man aspired to reach the moon, and then one day man landed on the moon. No technology is needed for you to aspire. You are born with that potentiality. Al-Hilaj Mansur was crucified. When he was taken to the cross, he burst into laughter. The crowd said, Mansur, this is not the time for laughing. His limbs were being cut and soon his neck will be cut off, but he was laughing. Mansur replied, All these people never looked towards the sky. Their gaze was always fixed on the ground. At least today, they can look ever towards the sky. This is the ultimate. Man has to learn to look upwards and yet remain firm on the ground. Never bother about all that is easily comprehensible for you. Always accept the challenge of that remains unintelligible. Try to understand that. What happened to Buddha, Mahabir, Lao Tse, etc. can certainly happen to you. Buddha too was once a seed. Each one of you has come with a possibility. The Master keeps on speaking to you of the yonder so that you may hear far away whispers and then slowly and slowly one day you will be pulled towards the unknown and unknowable and you will be able to be with the mystery. You may remember your nature, your potentiality for this. I go on speaking to you in myriad ways. The message is seen. Only it is being said in different ways, sometimes as Buddha, other times as Jesus or Krishna or other masters, so that this clarion call may enter deep within your being. This outer world keeps on changing. It is ephemeral. The house that you consider belonging to you is not really yours. The world is like a vast guest house where you come to rest for a night and then you continue your journey. The night may be longer or short matters not. Here in the outer realm, 
everything is fast changing. Certainly you will resist when someone tries to wake you from your deep slumber. The path is not full of flowers alone, instead there are thorns as well, such a small thing that you do not want to understand. Not that you do not have the capacity to understand, you are afraid. If you have really understood, then you will have to leave all this to move to another journey. You have to take interest in what I am speaking. Instead, you seek that which appeals to you. It is like this you have many tasty sweets decorated in your living room and the food inspector visits you. Certainly he will not be interested in those lovely sweets. His vision will remain focused on flies and mosquitoes around. He will look if the sweets are covered properly or not. His interest differs. So too, if the botanist enters the rose garden where the season of his spring is around, all around beautiful flowers are blossomed. The garden is full of beauty and the fragrance of the flowers in myriad hues. All this beauty, hue and fragrance will not interest the botanist. Certainly he will look at the variety, names and the breeds of the plants in the garden. Everyone has his own interest. A cobbler never looks at the beautiful face because his vision is focused on your shoes. He is a master of shoes. Through the condition of shoes, he can speak of your status. So too the tailor only looks at your clothes, from your apparel and their style he can speak about you. The people have no interest in listening to the master. A Sikh listens only if the master speaks on Gurbani and that too if this fits in his tradition. So too the Hindu listens to strengthen his Hindu mind. People from different traditions tell me why I speak on other traditions as well. Just specialize in one and that will bring large listenership. Such people have no interest in transformation. One who does not respect the point of view of the other or the religion has no right to be called religious. I say it categorically, such a person is animal in human garb. One who cannot envision one's own reflection in the other has no right to get the taste of love. Also one who cannot envision such oneness permeating through the entire cosmos is not alive indeed. He will be denied harmony's peaceful and blissful existence. The revolution is not their interest. You will see such crowd around if you have eyes to see. Some like the style of speaking, but not what is being communed. When you listen to the master deeply, then something will arise deep within. There will arise light within. When the light arises, first there will be heat and light will arise later. Really the light has two dimensions, one is burning and the other is enlightening. First the heat will arise and the warmth and when you start agreeing with it, then the same heat will transform into light. First flame comes and when you agree with the heat of the flame, then the same flame becomes light. When Buddhas say that you too are Buddhas, this appeals to your ego. There is yet another aspect of this as well and that part is not acceptable to you. When the Buddhas say you are sinner too, this does not appeal to you. Both are two sides of the same coin. You have to understand this and thus go beyond to you are indeed connected to both possibilities. You can go up or come down flat on the ground. The ladder is without prejudice. 
it is simply the device it can take you up or bring you down it will never invite you to go up or down the choice is always yours that is why the master speaks something of your interest and something of his interest his only interest is your transformation if i do not respond to your questions then i will not serve my purpose that is why i use your questions to commune with your innerness and take you one step further deep within you indeed such are the ways of the enlightened ones